Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the High Desert Garden. So today, what I wanted to bring to you is another um, harvest of worm castings from my Vermi Hut worm bin. And right now, I have the lid off of it, and I'll explain why here momentarily. But I wanted to bring you a video on this because uh, I've seen many people harvesting worm castings, uh, many videos, and I've seen people having to do a lot of effort, a lot of work to pick out the worms as they're harvesting the casting. And there are methods that you could use to prevent you from having to pick out so many worms. So one of the great things about the stackable um, bins like this, and I, I do really like this one even though I've built my own flow through worm bin system, there are benefits to this system that I do like. Uh, for one, is the byproduct it produces is this uh, worm leachate or uh, leachate that you can get from the uh, the drip tray. This it has a nice convenient little spout down here at the bottom, and that is very handy. Um, I only have the lid on this right now because the fact that I'm doing a video and I didn't want to spill it. But you would not want to leave the lid on this because you need it to get aerated. When I want to aerate this, I put the lid on, shake it a little bit, make sure I introduce lots of oxygen into it, and then I take the lid back off. And that's to prevent the growth of anaerobic bacteria in your leachate. Because uh, if anaerobic bacteria gets in there, you're not gonna to wanna to water your plants in with that, because you'll actually end up killing your plants. Okay, you need to actually make yourself sick. Uh, so good aeration is one of the things I really like also about this uh, stackable bin. Um, you got to be careful to make sure that it does stay light and airy and that you do um, check your bottom trays every, you know, at least once a week. I check my trays to make sure um, that the worms are healthy, staying aerated. Um, some people like to use those Rubbermaid containers and usually they have two, one for the, the base and then uh, one that they stack inside of it. Some people may use three or four and it, it kind of the same concept as this bin right here. Now you start out with the tray at the bottom and this is where you initially put your worms and your food and then as they kind of start to work that bedding and eat that bedding and the food, then you will fill your second tray. And as the worms consume the food in the bottom tray, the idea is that they migrate up to the next bin. And eventually, so they get up here to the third bin at the top. Now you can buy additional trays for this and you can have up to six trays with this particular unit. I like three. It's easier to take care of. I can make sure it stays aerated uh, and that I don't get any bad bacteria growing in here. Now, the idea is that the worms migrate to the top and then you can take the bottom tray off and you can harvest the castings. Um, the issue that I've noticed is many of the worms do migrate up, most of them do, but a good portion of them will stay down there in that bottom tray and they'll continue to rework and rework and rework that bedding. Um, so what I've noticed is that if I take the bottom tray, when I believe it is completed and it has nice castings, I'll take the bottom tray and instead of harvesting it, I'll move it to the top. And then I'll take the lid off. Now the good thing about this is it allows it to stay aerated. If there's been any bad bacteria from it being down at the bottom, that is going to get killed off from the oxygen in the air. The other thing that does is it allows the bedding to kind of start to not dry out, but become less moist. You would never want your castings to completely dry out because you're just going to kill off all the good bacteria. And then essentially all you have is a 1-1-1 fertilizer, which is pretty useless. So this is not to dry the castings, but to get some of the moisture out and then the worms that were left in this tray will migrate back down. Uh, so, and I will turn, 
I'll turn the castings in this tray that I moved to the top. Uh, and by turning castings, you introduce more air into there and the worms don't want to stay in there, you know, because you're turning the castings a couple of times a day. So I usually only leave it up here for 24 to 48 hours and then it becomes a very good, um, very good moisture level, very good consistency, very few worms in it, and then it's ready for harvesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you guys in and I'm going to show you just how simple it is to harvest your castings if you use a method like this. All right, so here's the tray. And as you can see, the finished castings look really good, okay? And there's still plenty of moisture in here. But at the same time, it's not really, really moist. And you'll find the occasional worm in here. But it is not packed full of worms like, um, like these trays do get, you know, packed really full of worms. Like the occasional worm. But it's definitely a lot less work because there's few worms. So what I'll do is I will take, and I'll take a bin like this. Or you can just toss them straight into your five gallon bucket. But I like to use a bin of this size. Um, let me slide this closer to the bin. All right. And what I'll do is I'll take a handful like this and I'll just throw it in the bin. And you can, if, if in, you get any worms in there, you just take them out. It's that simple. Just like that. And there, there's not a lot of worms to pick out, so you're not going to spend a lot of time doing this. Okay, again, you take your castings, throw them in there. I've yet to see any worms. Oh, there's one right there. And all I'll do is I'll take that out, I'll set it aside, I'll throw it back into the bin. So, it is that simple, guys. It's that simple to harvest your castings. Once I get this tray full, I'll take it, I'll dump it in my five gallon bucket where I store my finished castings. And that's as simple as it is. Um, I do set a lid on top of the five gallon bucket, but I do not snap that lid on. You, you wanna make sure you at least have a little bit of a gap to keep so that you can get some air movement. Because you don't want anaerobic uh, bacteria building up in your finished castings. You don't want it in your leche. Um, I've seen some videos where people will say, oh, leche will kill your plants. It's toxic. It's bad. And I could imagine that's probably because they allowed anaerobic activity to build up in their leche. So you keep things aerated. It's going to be a wonderful wonderful um, fertilizer or not really even necessarily a fertilizer because there's not a whole lot of the NPK in it um, but mostly good bacteria so I found that anything that I use my worm castings on or my leche or leche uh, anything any plant that I use it on it's like magic uh, so I really have enjoyed the worm bins um, they are not a lot of money to maintain at all. Uh, the only thing that I spend money on is maybe a little peat moss, a little co cocoa core. Uh, some people don't even use that. They just use shredded paper, which you could do. Uh, and I, I have started to use shredded paper because it does have its benefits, especially in my flow through worm bin. All right, so it's finished. It only took maybe 10 minutes. Um, and I only had to pick out maybe seven to ten worms. I didn't count them, but there weren't that many in there. And look, this five gallon bucket is almost full. It was maybe a third of the way full uh, before I added these uh, harvested castings to it. So quite a bit that you get from one tray, you know. Um, like I said, it was simple, took hardly any time picked out maybe seven to ten worms and there you have it um, anyways I just wanted to bring that to you guys I hope that helps 
Hope you guys start your own worm bins. They are great for the indoor and outdoor garden. Uh, so until next time, take care.